Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos, I'm here today, back with another Black Desert video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the most recent patch that came to Black Desert on November 15th of 2023, going over all the events, as well as major changes with the patch, that way you don't miss a thing. This week's patch brings a ton of stuff, so sit back, relax, we got a lot of stuff to talk over in the next hour or so, and it's going to be great. But, uh, quickly before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, new Black Desert, or you've been watching videos on the channel and still have not subscribed yet, please consider it. It helps to grow my channel, you stay up to date with new content that we both win. And without further ado, let's get into it and start off with the events like we do every Every single week and the first event is a gear tag event so if you head over to the gear tag feature which is this one right here tag characters you should be able to tag one of your various characters and then use the item copy function and only have to pay one Marnus fuel to be able to copy over all of that gear now if it looks like I went real fast for you I've got videos that cover this gear tagging system and all that sort of stuff on the YouTube channel I still do need to make an updated guide for the exp share but uh, yeah gear tagging feature Right now, a reduced cost down to one Marnie's Fuel running through December 6th, so you got a couple weeks to play with whatever characters you want there. Next up, we have the continuation of the various life skill events that are all going on here for the next couple of weeks. And our next one that we're going to talk about is going to be the Cooking Life Skill 1. So for this one, press the Y key on the keyboard, scroll down the list a little bit, you should see some cooking support items right here. So a Supreme Cooking Utensil will be sitting in your uh, items right here. Next up, if you use the Find NPC function to find the NPC Dalishan, D-A-L-I-S-H-A-I-N, it'll show you all the different Dalishans right here. So if you're struggling to find them, use that Find NPC function up here right next to your map. Um, but once you do find your favorite Dalishan NPC, interact with them, click on the chat option, and you will be able to exchange energy for a cooking buff, as well as an alchemy one that's running right now as well. But the cooking one is the new one that's been added, and this buff will provide you a 5 second reduction to your cooking time and a 25 cooking mastery bonus which basically means you can power level the heck out of cooking right now. In addition to this, there is a life EXP boost right now for cooking, so uh, yeah, uh, like if there was ever a time to power level cooking, it's right now. Now also coming with the cooking event here is more milk. So triple the milk from the milking minigame. These are all the different farm locations if you need to do milking. But anybody that's got milk farming alts, you'll now get triple the milk from it, which is pretty cool. Some bonus money from that. And then the fourth and final little one here is a quest you can accept from David Finto. It'll allow you to trade some beer in for some milk, and then you can, you know, just get some, some bonus milk once a day per family. So that's it for the cooking one. We then have the farming one. And with this one, if you press the Y key on the keyboard, you are going to see a bunch of stuff here relative to farming. So you've got a new old moon fence, as well as a bunch of these seeds of abundance. We can go ahead and claim that. Head over to your favorite flat plot of land, open up your inventory, and click on it to drop down the farm. Go ahead and place it. Interact with it with the R key in the middle, and go ahead and plant some of these event abundant seeds. And once you got all 10 of those planted, you can just uh, go ahead and wait for those to grow. During this period, running through November 29th, you're going to get 100% farming EXP and be able to harvest those little rice seeds that we planted there for Blessed Seeds of the Earth, as well as 70 to 80 rice. These seeds of the Earth can be exchanged with the NPC R. And for those of you that don't know where the NPC R is, she's located in Calpheon. So uh, right here, Seed Vendor R, Calpheon City. Click on it to place a waypoint on the map as to where you need to go for that one. R is going to go ahead and give you a nutritious haystack, which you can then use to plant and get even more different items from it. The next life skill being hit by this little event period here is the trade life skill. So running through November 29th, you're going to get double the number of these Marindora Spirit Essence thingies here that you use in order to craft the Forest Parado Wagon here. So double the road some of those from doing quest lines. You'll also see in the patch notes here that we have a lot of improvements to wagons as well as horses, but that's a little bit of a spoiler alert, so pretty neat. That's it for the main events, we then get into all of the Calpheon Ball themed events. So, for those of you that are newer to Black Desert, every couple of months, they do these things called Calpheon Balls, or Heidel Balls, or just pick your favorite city in the game, and uh, call it a ball. Now this one's going to start on December 15th and 16th, depending on your region, and what they do during this is kind of give you a roadmap for everything you can expect in Black Desert. Typically when these come out, I go ahead and cover them and put a little synopsis for you in my YouTube videos. Um, I'll be away on vacation when this one drops, so I apologize, you won't get the summary from me. But, to give you an overview of what they do, essentially just tell you everything they're going to be coming out with, new classes, if there's any of those coming, you get that announced, new regions, new items, all that sort of stuff to look forward to for the next three to four months, they kind of announce here. New game modes, new PvP stuff might be coming out, uh, we'll see what they announce this year, but yeah, so definitely something to look forward to. And in the lead up to it, we have a bunch of different events. So the first one is the Thousand Hearts Flutter, the Calpheon Ball event series. For this one, you're going to be logging into the game for 30 minutes every day, up to 120 minutes, to get Daring Calpheon Seals. These can be used to enter a raffle, and if you successfully win the raffle, you'll get the item. If you don't, you're going to get these other little pity seals that you can use to exchange for items of your choice. These raffles have a fixed percent chance of succeeding. Those percentage chances are open up on the screen right here, so you can kind of just see them. Most people, from what I'm seeing in-game, have been pulling for the Vel's Heart and the Garmoth's Heart. 
You can see there's only 200 of them available on week one, but if you wait a little bit longer, there's more of them available to pull from. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. If you don't get your shot at what you're looking for, then, you know, you can uh, you can wait for a little bit. If you fail to win, you're going to get inspiring Calpheon coins, and those can be exchanged for various items that you see on the screen here, with the big one being the Jay's Hammer of Loyalty right here. But additional items that are really cool include a Made for Hire box, which is fantastic, basically 100 weight for every character on your account, and other horse upgrade items that are there. So how does this work in game? If you press the Y key on the keyboard, you will see the challenges menu right here. I have three of these, so I can claim uh, three sets of those. Get the 15 seals into my inventory. You then click on the little heart icon in the top right corner, and you'll see the raffle and what's available and left on it here. See so Vel's hearts, Garmoth's hearts, Cronstone bundles, just a flat pile of Cronstones. You know, in general, a bunch of different items here that you can redeem from. So, um, stuff to check out and go for. And with that, we've gone through all the event type stuff, so now let's get into the patch notes themselves, and this patch is absolutely massive. So first things first, we have class changes to like pretty much the majority of classes in the game. All of this right here is class changes. Tons and tons of class changes. All of that is class change. You see the little scrolly bar on the side there? That's like 70% of these patch notes, maybe 80% of the patch notes are dedicated to class changes. I'm not going to read every single one of these to you. The general theme for all of these updates for all these different classes are increases to the scaling on the majority of their skills in the PvE side, with PvP nerfs to compensate for the overall damage increase that they're getting, which basically amounts to saying that the classes aren't being buffed as far as their scaling in PvP. They're just getting bonuses in PvE side. Additionally, a lot of classes that didn't have HP recovery on their skills, or they did have HP recovery but um, it wasn't like super strong, have had buffs or entirely new like applications of HP recovery. Additionally, a lot of skill cooldowns were reduced for different classes. Some classes got flow type improvements to the ways that the chains of the skills work, and some classes got additional buffs applied to skills like DP up on different items and skills and whatnot. And it also comes with a little blurb as to why they're doing it. Essentially, the idea here is that certain classes benefited from having their buffs on their skills already applying to skills they were using, so it made it easier to continue to do damage while getting buffs and making your life easier, compared to other classes where you had to like go out of your way to apply certain buffs. The example I can see of that here, for example, is on the Musa, where DP plus 20 was added to Pyro Storm. In order to get that buff before you had to switch into Succession, activate Rising Storm, switch back into your Awakening, and then you'd have the DP buff. So things like that, they made it a little bit easier for classes to apply their buffs in their main rotation without having to go out of their way. Same thing goes for healing, made the healing a little bit better without having to go out of your way. Now as far as which classes had these changes applied to them, we've got Warrior, Ranger, Sorceress, Berserker, Tamer, Musa, Mewa, Valkyrie, Kanuichi, Ninja, Wizard, Witch, Dark Knight, Striker, Mystic, Lan, Archer, Shy, Guardian, Hashishin, Nova, Sage, Corsair, Dracania, and Megu. I skipped Musa because Musa didn't really get anything to it. It's got one little line here. Um, now this one little line here though is pretty neat because for both the Wusa and the Megu, we have their new Abyssal skills been released. So for those of you that don't remember what these are or you haven't used it in a while, K key on the keyboard, you'll see under your main tab there's going to be an Abyssal skill. For example, my Musa, it is Mountain Divide. Um, this skill has been released for both the Wusa and the Megu. So that's the basic summary there for class changes and stuff right there. We can now move into the other content that came with this patch. And we're going to start off with the Dark Rift patch note here. So Dark Rifts have been removed in some cases and other have enhanced loot. So Steel Nux, Kavali, Ancient Putra, Maroon's Guard Tower, Sunil Siege Captain, and Ronin have all been removed from the game entirely. And instead, Farid, Red Nose, Nastard Bag, Muskin, and Dim Tree Spirit, and Griffin have all had improvements to the various rewards. To go along with this removal of those certain bosses, you're only gonna have a maximum of six Dark Rifts available to you now. So down at the bottom you can see I've got six Dark Rift bosses down here now. And those Dark Rift bosses have additional items that are dropping from them. So you get double the number of boxes from them, double the amount of Ancient Spirit Dust, and basically just, just double the amount of all sorts of drops that are available to it. We also have Mythical Feathers that have been added to the drop table as well for these to kind of incentivize more experienced players to go out and go and do them. Next up, we have a pretty slick quality of life improvement here. One of the biggest questions I get on my live stream are like, Levi, how do I find out where all my contribution points are? And then I go through some big like lists here saying, if you hover over this, it'll tell you where your current usage is used, and blah, 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 blah. You can now use the find my item function and type in CP to see the items that you have that have a CP cost associated with them. CP being contribution point. So for example, if you have like rented fences, you'll be able to see that, yep, I have these rented fences and this is where they are right now and I can go and trade them back in to get my contribution points back. So super awesome little feature right there. Especially if you're coming back to the game after a couple of months and like, what happened to all my stuff? Uh, pretty nice. 
Everlasting Herb has had its drop rate increased across the board, pretty much. Truffle Mushrooms have also had their drop rates increased. We then get into a new item here, the Artina Soul for the Shy. So, this is a new series of items that you can pick up to help the Shy with their Awakening Weapon type situation here. As many of you know, I don't play Shy, so I'm not the best person to be getting advice from on this, but it's a neat little feature, I guess, to try and make the Shy's items more useful in uh, PvE type combat. Now the next one we have here is a little support note, which doesn't come out too often, but the support team for Black Desert says, if you accidentally devoured your Black Star or God Ride weapons between August 23rd and November 15th, when they put in a little stopgap to keep you from blowing them up on yourself, if you put in a ticket by uh, November 29th, they'll go back and review your logs and potentially decide if they want to give you back your item or not. So um, something to keep in mind if you accidentally blew up your gear, definitely uh, have an opportunity to pick it up right there. Moving on into the grinding stuff, in the City of the Dead, the number of items that drop from the NPCs there has been increased from 1 to 2 to 1 to 3, so a little buff, I guess, on that side for the grinding side. We then get into the horse updates that I alluded to, so the auto-pathing is now going to work better such that you don't run off edges and hit cliffs and bounce into walls and whatnot, which is neat. Additionally, the wagons have better turn radiuses and easier to control turns with the uh, AS and D keys there, so WASD, to make tighter turns around things, which is pretty, pretty neat. Big fan of that. The durability has been improved on the forest path wagon type stuff. Leveling from levels 49 to 50 has been improved such that all you have to do is talk to the Black Spirit instead of completing the quest. The notification telling you that you need to level up has also been removed for people that have been playing for a while, such that it doesn't pop up all the time when you're playing on your life skiller. The quest line for the Succession and Awakening quests have had the AP reduced of the boss by 80%, and also made it so your stuff doesn't break when you, talk to, uh, when you die to the boss or if you die to the boss. For those of you that are into naval content, a bunch of the different reefs out in front of Port Furia have been removed, to make it easier to travel around and not get stuck on the water. And then we got a nice quality of life feature here, making so that you can delete alchemy and cooking recipes that might be wrong. So for those of you that have accidentally put recipes together that sucked or were wrong or didn't work, uh, you can remove them now with the delete function that's been added. And with that, we've hit pretty much all of the major important stuff that came with this week's patch. So like I said, a ton of different events. Biggest one is a login reward event, so make sure you're claiming these and putting in your rolls onto your various items that you can get. I'm now going to take my shot here because I finally got up to 20 tokens at another Vel's Heart that I can hopefully just, you know, cash in on real quick. So we're going to click that. And I got nothing. But I did get 20 of the seals, which is a Jay's Hammer, which means another pen attempt this weekend on the weekend live stream. So make sure to tune in twitch.tv slash evil Oh, and then somebody got that right after. I should have clicked it. That should have been me. Um, anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you found this video useful. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below which one of these events are you most looking forward to. Let me know. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you at the next YouTube video, Twitch live stream, or wherever I happen to see you. Thanks.